It's one of those, do you remember where you were when you heard the news moments? The announcement this morning of the death of David Bowie has brought tributes from around the world. I'm Gary Kemp from the band Spandau Ballet. And exactly a year ago, my hero, David Bowie, passed away. This remarkable musical legend has left a huge hole for all of us who loved his work. So I decided to mark the anniversary of his death by revisiting some of his old haunts in London, our shared home city. Joining me on my trip is Nicholas Pegg, the author of the book, The Complete David Bowie. Nick. Hello, Gary. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. How are you? <laughs> Good, thanks. So, this is it. Wow. It's absolutely amazing, isn't it? Look at the graffiti. I oh, know, it's quite moving, isn't it? I mean, it's just lyrics and tributes that people have done. But I always thought he grew up in Bromley, so... He did grow up in Bromley, but he was born in Brixton. This is where it all began. Uh, his family moved out into the suburbs when David was about six. It was a very ordinary, unremarkable, post-war, sort of lower middle class, I suppose you call it, upbringing. Like a lot of people of that generation, living out in the suburbs, he was looking in at London at the bright lights. Did he ever come back to Brixton and visit his old birthplace? He did, actually. He came back many years later with his band Tin Machine. He sort of took them around the corner and said, look, here's where it all began. Do you think we should have a look? Shall we? Shall we go and have a look at David Bowie's birthplace? Mm -hmm. Here we are, Stansfield, Stansfield Road. This is, where this is where it all began. So what was his date of birth? 8th of January, 1947. And he shared it with someone, didn't he? Uh, he shared it with several sort of other celebrities. I mean, Elvis Presley, somewhere in America, was celebrating his 12th birthday. 12th birthday. Yeah. And Stephen Hawking uh, oh, right. was five on the same day. And of course, he, he released his last album on his... Uh, on his birthday, birthday, yeah, yeah, the 8th of January. A few uh, days before he died. That's right, just a couple of days before he died, yeah. There's an interesting little story as well about the day that David Bowie was born, uh, that the town hall clock just around the corner from here, because of the freezing conditions the night before at midnight struck 13 times a little portent for the really? baby boy that was born in this really? house starman it's good it's good little bell strikes another night your eyes are this song heavy, the london boys is about the suburban ideal of what makes London, but it's also how dangerous London can be, isn't it? That's right, it's about a young boy, 17, goes to London, the big bright lights, finds a bedsit and lives there and, you know, makes some Which new friends. Which he would have done, right? Exactly, it's the life that Bowie had ex was experiencing himself at that very time. Bright lights, so hard. Most rock stars sung about American streets, you know, Route 66, or whatever it might be, you know. David was one of the, the very few, if not the only one, singing about Soho, where, you know, I was hanging out as a teenager. So, yeah, I suppose there's not really much left of the Soho that Bowie was singing about in uh, The London Boys, but there's a kind of a feel. No, it still has some dives. There's still a lot of people in trouble here. There's still kids, you know, partying and... Uh, yeah, absolutely, ...struggling yeah. just like The London Boys. Absolutely right. Now, Jaconda Coffee Shop was where, like so many young hopefuls, Around about 65, 66, David Bowie started hanging out, met with his friend Mark Boland there, all sorts of other people, members of his early band. So this is where we see him walking in on that little Super 8 truck. That's right. Completely by chance, someone was looking through their parents' old cine film collection, and um, lo and behold, who is it in the clip? It's the young David Bowie. But this is an important street. Not only were there recording studios here, which he worked in, yep. but it was, where, it was Tim Pan Alley. It was where all the music publishers used to hang out. Absolutely. So, yeah, he would come down here. Say, I've got a new song. Yeah. You know, I'm on, can you get me a cut? Hang out, meet up with some agents. Have you got anything for me this week? Have you got something for me to translate? You know, all this sort of stuff would be going on. And, of course, Bowie was one of many teenage hopefuls who was doing this sort of thing. It's a real bit of well, London music history. Uh, the ghosts Denmark are still street. here. They certainly are. They're Walking still, the yeah. dead. Just walking the dead. When that song came out, a lot of people at the time, because it was his first song for many years, said, oh dear, his voice sounds a bit shot. He was doing it deliberately. That's right. It's soaked with sort of experience and regret and sort of frailty. But it's not Bowie's frailty, it's the frailty of Carrie. Of course it is to a certain extent, because everything he gave off yeah, himself yeah, in yeah. his songs, but it's the sort of, it's the character who is singing that song. Let's see what else we've got now. Let's, let's have some, yeah, let's have some, um, a bit more uh, upbeat, I think. All right. 
Sort of in the early 70s, I would have just had a felt tip marker and just written <laughs> Ziggy on the wall here because this is where they because did the Because this is where it was taken, yeah, yes. Yeah. So that marks the spot. Yeah, Hobo looking Eastwood, that way. Looking down there. Kay West side, the, yep, Furriers. Right, the fur, the, yes, the Furriers, yes. Quest. Absolutely. <laughs> Bowie was always a fan of those found symbols. And it would have been here just simply because there was a photographer's studio up there where they were doing a photo session for the album. Steve. That's right, they were doing portraits of the band inside and then um, someone said, let's get outside and... And the rest of the band didn't come out because it was raining. Because it was pouring with rain. It's an amazing album cover, isn't it? Because it's, it's a photo of a guy in a back street in London with a load of dustbins and cardboard boxes, but it's... It does look like an alien who's just landed. Yeah, it, 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 teleported into yeah. a phone box. And then what makes it so mythical looking is it's yeah. all hand tinted. Yes, that's right, because it's a black and white photograph yeah. and then hand tinted to look like a... Yes, Something from a like... New York musical. Yes. Yeah. The last place I want to visit on our day tour is the set of Lazarus the musical that was to be Bowie's final creative project. We're meeting the young actress, Sophia Ann Caruso, whose character represents hope to the lonely, stranded alien, Thomas Jerome Newton. Now the workers have struck for fame, cause Lenin's on sale. I think it, it's very emotional. It's about a man looking yeah. for love and looking for lost family. And Absolutely. there's so much in Regret. it that now we know what yeah. happened to David yeah. that we can paint onto it. But there seems to me that there were elements already in his mind of mortality. Sophia, was Bowie in your life before this play? Yeah, I always knew who he was and looked up to him and loved his music. And I think that's something about his music is it's relatable to anyone and everyone and, and to all the weirds and to all the crazies. Did you meet him when, in the audition? Nobody was supposed to meet him. You know, there was me and other girls auditioning. I was the first appointment of the day and they were finishing like a production meeting in the same building and I got a call from my agent and they're like, can you be there? This is an hour from my appointment time. They said, can you be there in 10 minutes? David Bowie wants to watch you audition. And of course, I jumped off the bus and sprinted all the way to the casting office. And he was so calm. And I shook his hand and I said, I'm Sophia. And he's like, hi, I'm David, you know. And yeah, he was just so normal. Yeah. You know, he wasn't weird. Like I would think, I don't know. And he's a very I'm funny like, guy, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, he was. And he was such a, a god in my eyes, you know, to me growing up that I never thought that he, yeah. he could possibly sick be sick or exactly. he could die and I never, it never really crossed my mind. I remember hearing it on the news when I woke up seven o'clock in the morning and being in utter shock because I'd just been, you know, do, singing the praises of his latest work mm -hmm. and he was so alive in his creativity. David Bowie, with all of your strangeness and wonderful haircuts, no one helped me through my adolescence more than you. And we continue to salute you for the inspiration and confidence that you've given so many of us. Thank you.